ahead on the news at four. I felt that it's a total violation of our privacy. Gym locker rooms under surveillance, a local fitness change taking heat over where new cameras are being installed. Plus, Montgomery County schools hit with anti-Semitic graffiti again, this time just days before classes start. Then a grocery chain reverses course on its controversial bag policy, but they're adding a new rule affecting younger shoppers. The latest from Giant. Our current fall preview is set to continue, but we'll let you know when things will start to warm up again. And the holiday travel outlook. Find out how hot Labor Day weekend travel is this year compared to last. And thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. We begin with some breaking news. A deadly shooting has been reported inside a gym in Fairfax County. DC News Now's Max Marcella joins us live now with the latest. Max, you're at the Gold's Gym in Reston. What's the latest? Well, Mark and Annalise, so we're going to show you what it looks like now here at the Gold's Gym in Reston. This is where the shooting happened just a few hours ago. You can see there is still a pretty decent police presence as the gym is not open. There are also some people who look like they may have been mid-workout who left. We spoke with someone here who lives in the apartment building above this gym who said in the moments after the shot, shots were fired, people were just running out of the gym. They didn't know where to go. But right now, what police are trying to do is find the person who shot and killed a man inside this gym. They said the person ran away from the scene. They don't know where he is right now. They are actively looking for him. We don't know what led up to this shooting. Police say it was two people who were working out perhaps in the same area of the gym, but they didn't know if there was any argument or anything that led up to the shooting. So right now what police are doing is trying to find the shooter in this case. But again, as you mentioned, Mark and Annalisa, one person has been killed here at this Gold's Gym. We'll continue following this story and bring you the latest updates live when we get it. Reporting live in Reston, Max Marcella, DC News Now. All right, Max, thank you. Developing now members at a DC gym chain, Vita Fitness, are living, threatening to cancel the memberships after cameras were installed in the men's locker room. Yeah, those members at Vita locations on U Street and Logan Circle say the cameras went up without much notice. DC News Now's Randy Bass is live outside of the U Street location this afternoon with more. Randy, members are concerned. Yeah, members we talked to here today were shocked to see those cameras go up, but Logan Circle members heard from Vita this afternoon saying that they are pausing implementation of those cameras. It's not clear when or if those cameras will actually ever be turned on, but still members we talked to are sharing concerns this afternoon. Photos taken inside today showing cameras throughout the locker rooms at Vita Fitness near the showers and sinks. The member who snapped the photos on U Street today asking not to show his face on camera. I felt that it's a total violation of our privacy. Feeling frustrated after leaving the gym this morning. People walk around the locker room um, without clothing on all the time. Um, people are going to forget that those cameras are there. He says if the cameras stay up, he may be looking for a new gym. He also stopped by the Logan Circle location today too and saw cameras up in the men's locker room there. Members got a message about the men's locker room cameras. We just got a message on the Vita app saying that they're reinstalling it, so, but there's no explanation as to why. The message says the cameras are for increasing visibility for safety and security purposes, saying that monitoring will be, quote, discreet and only accessible by trained monitoring technicians. It's not clear if cameras will be added to the women's locker rooms, too. Still, members are raising concerns. What is the, you know, what is the exact need to be filmed? And, and who is looking at this footage? And how is this footage being stored and maintained? And you now, a manager at a different location here in D.C. on K Street, they told us over the phone today that they do not have any cameras installed in men's locker rooms or any locker rooms at that particular K Street location. We also reached out to Vita Fitness for any comments on the situation. We have not heard back in an official statement at this point. We also reached out to D.C.'s Office of the Attorney General, trying to look into the legality and the implications of having locker rooms, cameras in the locker rooms. Live on U Street, I'm Randy Bass, D.C. News Now. 
Randy, thank you. And taking a live look outside right now at Roslyn. It was a bit chilly out there uh, for August uh, day, August 20th here. But hey, it's still a nice day out there. It was awesome for me, Annalisa. I went out this morning. I was like, let's I'm ready to take on the world. <laughs> but let's head over now to meteorologist Damon Madsen with a check on the forecast. Damon, you and I, we spoke at noon. Uh, a great start to the day. Well, Mark and Elisa, I think you guys just summed it up perfectly. If you like the summer temps today may not quite have been the day for you, especially considering we are still in August. But if you are more of a fan of that chilly air, that more fall like setup, well, today was fantastic. How about these temperatures that we started out with again this morning? We did not see a massive drop in temperatures to the east. It was still 67 for our lowest temperature around around sunrise in DC 71 down across parts of southern Maryland near Lexington Park and then it got chillier as you went more west 50s from the I-81 corridor back into the mountains of western Maryland and West Virginia. Now from that point temperatures did not warm up much as we've gone throughout the day. It's comfortable but certainly cool given that it is August the 20th just 74 in DC still in the 60s in Hagerstown and Martin and really as we go now on toward the evening, these temperatures in the 70s will quickly give way to much cooler readings. Clouds, they will start to break up. They've been with us most of the day and we will see more of a clear sky in calmer winds as we head into the overnight. Look at this 11 o'clock. We're down to 64 and then by the time we get to tomorrow morning, you might need a jacket to kick off your Wednesday. We'll talk about how long this cooler air, this more fall like setup sticks around and a look at your full forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Well, in Montgomery County, police have now arrested a first grade teacher in connection with a fentanyl related death. Sarah Majid was taken into custody after a search warrant of her Burtonsville home. Police say the arrest comes after a man died from fentanyl back in March. Majid is in jail awaiting a bond hearing now. We've reached out to MTCPS for a comment. In Prince George's County, traffic is moving again after a deadly crash on I-95 in Laurel involving a dump truck. It happened just after 9 this morning. State police say the truck driver died after crashing off the highway near the Sandy Spring Road. That what led up to the crash is still under investigation. And happening now, some people in Prince George's County are being asked to restrict their water usage. This after water pressures suddenly dropped Monday around Camp Springs. DC News Now's Dave LaBall joins us live with the latest. Well, hey there, Mark. What we can tell you, the good news is crews earlier today completed scheduled maintenance work on a water main along this stretch of Allentown Road. The goal, the focus now is refilling the Camp Springs t water tank. The Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission supplies water to the area. It says pressure in the main suddenly dropped Monday while crews worked on it. That also led levels in the water tank to fall. The utility company has not issued a boil water advisory, but it says that could happen if water levels continue dropping. That's why customers are asked to voluntarily reduce the amount of water they use. Don't water the lawn if you don't have to. Maybe hold off a couple of days until we're uh, back to normal. Uh, don't wash your car, just things like that. Um, if you don't have to use water, don't, only for the essential services. Right now, the voluntary restriction impacts about close to 1,400 customers. There's no word on when the voluntary restriction will be lifted. We're live in Camp Springs, Maryland. Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, Dave, thank you. New at four, the union representing the majority of Metro workers have agreed on a new tentative contract. It's the latest in the series of steps by Local 689, which includes thousands of transit employees, including WMATA bus and rail workers. The contract will become official if the WMATA board of directors signs off. And happening now in Prince George's County, the search is on for three suspects connected to at least 10 armed robberies dating back to July. This surveillance video is linked to two August incidents, one across from the shops at Iverson in Temple Hills and another off Forestville Road in District Heights. Police say the robbers hit convenience stores, gas stations and fast food restaurants and in several cases robbed people of their belongings. You can get a closer look at the suspects photos in this story on our website. 
abcnewsnow.com. And developing now, bias-related incidents are a growing problem in Montgomery County. At least four schools have are now involved in that in the latest attack Monday, just days before students are set to return to their classrooms. DC News Now's Kevon Dupree covers Montgomery County. He has the latest details here. County officials say four Montgomery County public schools were vandalized with bias related graffiti on Monday. County leaders are now working with the police department and school district to put an end to this problem. Strathmore and Fallsmead Elementary Schools and Churchill and Wooten High Schools were the four schools vandalized with anti Semitic and anti LGBTQ graffiti. County Executive Mark Elridge says the language used is hateful and upsetting. It's not healthy for the community. So these acts are disturbing and you know the goal is simply to divide our community. The Jewish Federation of Greater Washington CEO Gil Pru says the recurring acts of vandalism at schools and places of worship are infuriating. People who decide to vandalize schools with hate based graffiti know what they're doing. They want to make this as public of a statement as possible. The congregation Bethel Synagogue in Bethesda was vandalized twice in the past week. Proust says they're looking for ways to enhance security at all Jewish places of worship in the county. We created a mechanism called J Shield, which is a community wide security apparatus that provides assessments and recommendations on how to improve security, including the use of cameras, including the use of guards, etc. Meanwhile, county leaders are working to find solutions. We're going to have to, I think, come up with some more um, aggressive surveillance techniques. MCPS Superintendent Dr. Thomas Taylor responded to the incidents in a statement, saying in part, quote, the district has reported these instances to the police and will fully cooperate in any investigative needs. He went on to say, we firmly denounce divisive actions that perpetuate hate, inequality, and injustice against any person, family, or community. Reporting in Rockville, I'm Kevon Dupree, DC News Now. Well, some giant grocery stores are reversing course on a controversial new bag policy. Shoppers complained when the chain started banning large bags as a way to prevent theft. In response, Giant will once again allow backpacks measuring up to 14 by 14 by 16 inches in select stores. And that's as long as the customer agrees to have their bag searched before they walk out. And starting on Thursday, some Giant stores will not allow shoppers under the age of 18 in without an adult after 6 p.m.